AMD wants you to know just how fast the 7800X3D is. Android finally gets airdrop for PC, and finally, they're here. AMD giving us the small goods. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Monday, April 3rd, 2023. And we're going to start off today talking about new benchmarks coming out for the Ryzen 7 7800X3D that is supposed to launch this coming Thursday, April 6th. And these benchmarks are actually coming out from AMD. AMD themselves. So take them with a grain of salt because first party benchmarks can't always be relied upon due to the fact that AMD has in the past done some tricksy numbers with their processors and their graphics cards, just like Intel has. But if we take a look at what AMD is claiming with this thing, it is going to be a mighty fine beast specifically compared to the i9-13900K. You can see in games like Horizon Zero Dawn, it's up to 31% faster. In other games like Borderlands 3, it's nearly identical, but for the most part, beating out in the title that AMD has selected for themselves to win in and losing in just a few like CSGO, Ashes of the Singularity, Cyberpunk 2077, but not losing by too big of a deal. Now, this is remarkable because the 7800X3D is supposed to launch for a price point of $450, which is significantly cheaper than the 600 or roundabout there price that the 13900K does cost. However, you do have to consider the fact that you can pair the 13900K with DDR4, so you don't have to buy new RAM necessarily, so that makes it like slightly cheaper. Also, if you buy it with Zip on Newegg, you can get like 12% off, which is a pretty good deal, but isn't necessarily gonna apply everywhere, especially just shopping on Newegg. But it does look like the 7800X3D is gonna be a mighty fine contender, $450. We talked about recently how B650 motherboards have dropped to 125 bucks. You slot those in two together, you're having a motherboard and a CPU for the same price as what you can get Intel's flagship chip for and getting roughly the same gaming performance. This looks like it's gonna be a good upgrade. Let me know if you're thinking about picking one up down below in the comments. We're gonna be there at the launch for these chips at Micro Center this coming Thursday. Let me know what your plans are if you're planning to upgrade to the 7800X3D down below while I let you know about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. Now, I fortunately have never been in a serious car accident myself, but I know friends and family members who have. I have a distinct memory of being a child and being in a courtroom with my dad for an accident where he was hit by a distracted driver. And the thought of having to go through all of that just seems overwhelming, but not with Morgan & Morgan. They've modernized the injury law process Process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave the couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor bills all from your phone. You can even text message your attorney and case manager without having to go into an office. When you're injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in an accident. And if you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell. Big thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. But for running that 7800X3D, you might actually be able to get super fast memory on it because AMD and JDEC are coming out with their DDR5 MR dim speeds, which can go up to 17,600 mega transfers per second, or as it's colloquially known, megahertz. It's not quite one-to-one, -one, but people communicate RAM and megahertz, and so that's what I'm just gonna refer to it as for the remainder of the segment, despite it being wrong. So there's a roadmap for this RAM that you're gonna slot into your system, and currently we're getting up to about 8,800 mega transfers per second, but they're expecting that you could potentially even get that up to double that amount because they're essentially going to take the DDR part of DDR and then DDR it again. So instead of it being double data rate, which is what DDR stands for, it's gonna be quad data rate or QDR. You want QDR5 in your system, 17,600 megahertz RAM in your chip. You combine that with like an Epic system or like the upcoming Intel server ones that can go up to 12 channels of memory and you're getting tons of memory throughput, which is essentially why AMD is coming and partnering up with JDEC to get this standard pushed across because these chips are actually being memory starved at the high level and they need this extra speed. So going from DDR to QDR is likely gonna be the move, whether or not QDR is gonna make it into mainstream consumer motherboards remains to be seen. It likely will be focused on for the Epic chips, for the server stuffs and everything at the high end before it makes its way down to us plebeian normies, which is exactly what Sony was trying to deliver with the PSVR 2, a plebeian normie headset 
for you to play your video games, but they're being found out that uh, they're not selling a whole lot. So research firm is indicating that it's not likely that it sold more than 270,000 units, which Sony wanted to sell a whole lot more than that. And that is likely due to the fact that this bad boy costs 550 buckarinos. And it's being reported that because of the lack of sales, just the sheer drop off, Sony was expecting millions to potentially be sold at least some point this year, but the sales data is not indicating that. That industry analysts suspect that a price cut on the PSVR 2 will be needed to avoid a complete disaster of their new product. I have to say that this is 100% spot on for me. The PSVR 2 looks great, but it costs more than the console itself. I just, I don't see myself swinging that amount of money. A PS5 can be found for as little as 400 bucks. You can get them right now anywhere. They're not even out of stock anymore. You can go to Best Buy, pick up a PS5 for $400, the digital edition. You want me to drop more than that on a headset display that can only be used on the PlayStation? Like at least a TV, I can then watch my shows on afterwards, my stories. I have a hard time watching my stories on a PSVR too. And Reese knows what stories I'm talking about. We watch them together sometimes. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It's a new week, we've got some new deals to hopefully get you started out on the right foot. I'm Reese. I have deals, I also have sore legs from gym yesterday and I almost didn't do this episode standing up. Thanks Reese. at least we didn't give you guys any April Fool's UFD deals that I'm aware of. Maybe Reese did update the website, but there were a lot of shenanigans to be had on Saturday when it came to tech and gaming in terms of April Fool's. We already talked about in Friday's episode how I took exception to a couple of companies releasing it early, the, namely at the time it was Be Quiet, but Sapphire came out with the RX 7999 XTT Mega high-end GPU. It's not real. Razer coming out with the Razer Razer so that you can shave your face with your mouse. This is perfect. Razer, at least in my opinion, always kind of kills it on April Fool's. It's just absurd enough that you're like, that's ridiculous, but I kind of want it. I see what you're going for. And sometimes that ends up with them releasing the product as being real. Gigabyte talking about a cat bed for your PC, which is amazing. The Aura's Cat Master. That's hilarious. Perfect. Lovely stuff. The Seasonic coming out with the Ultron 2025 Diamond Efficiency Power Supply, which very much looks AI generated. Like they told Mid Journey, hey, come up with a new power supply for Seasonic. And then it did whatever this is. And that's exactly what NZXT also appears to have done for their graphics card that they announced, which I, again, I shamed Be Quiet for this and I just have to give a little, hey, bad, bad to you NZXT for doing this because number one, they launched this on March 31st on Friday, which number one, very bad timing, don't like that. It's a little bit excusable because April 1st was on a weekend and you don't want corporate people to actually work on the weekends. I understand that, but the problem I have with NZXT's April Fool's joke is that this is something we all want. I want this. People want to buy an NZXT GPU. There's no reason to think that this is so ridiculous you wouldn't release it. You've released monitors. You've released keyboards and mices. You've been releasing new product categories, motherboards, all of that kind of stuff. And then for us to think, oh, NZXT would never release a GPU, it's ridiculous. No, it's perfectly in line with the plants. And it looks kind of like, besides the AI generated part of this, like an NZXT GPU. You can kind of tell there's a little funky things around the edges, like the connection at the bottom for PCI Express does doesn't look a whole lot of right. And also the heat sink like behind the fans doesn't look right. And then like the actual connector up here, you can tell is a little bit shorted. It does look like they just slapped their logo on there and they slapped this on there. It's not fully kitted out. Like, and once you look deeply into it, you're like, yes, this is obviously April Fool's. But at the set, I was like, NZXT is releasing a GPU. That's amazing. And then I looked at the date and I was like, it's March 31st. They can't possibly be lying to me, right? No, of course they release it early. You can't violate the sanctity of April Fool's. You have to release it on the first. If you don't release it on the first, then you make it so that when there's other product launches that legitimately happen on the 31st, nobody knows what's going on. EK Waterblocks had a legitimate product announcement for a blacked out version of their Nucleus AIO. And I looked at that and I was like, I don't know if this is real. I can't tell. They, I just have no, I have no inkling until now on Monday when it's like, okay, the dust is settled. That is real. But because companies like NZXT and Be Quiet release their April Fool's jokes days early, it creates this air where everything just has to be questioned. And it's just, you don't need to do that. Schedule your tweet, schedule your post. Don't work on the first, that's totally fine, but don't release it on the 31st or the 30th. I, 
I get it. I don't like any of this. Let me know what your favorite April Fool's joke that either happened to you personally or that you saw a company did down below in the comments. I want to hear if there was anything exciting that I potentially missed. One of the things that a lot of people miss when they switch from Mac over to PC is just the seamless ecosystem that Apple has created with things like AirDrop, being able to share files between different things like your phone and your computer, your MacBook, all of that. And now it looks like Google and Microsoft are finally going to start to play nice in order to make that happen with Android devices. Nearby Share Beta is officially rolling out for Windows PCs where you can use this app to actually transfer things over Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, just like AirDrop typically works to make it so that you don't have to data link a cable to get the fastest speed possible and it's more seamless. There's an ecosystem being built out for it. Let you quickly transfer photos, videos, documents, and audio files. This honestly might be enough to make me switch from Apple over to Android specifically for my use cases because I am on Windows for the vast majority of my work, but I am on iPhone when it comes to my mobile stuff. I'm interested to see how this plays out, but this is currently just a beta being rolled out in the US and a few other countries where it's going to be coming out sometime soon. It does not work on Windows for ARM at the current moment, just the regular full-fledged Windows. Let me know if you're going to try out nearby share or if AirDrop was one of the reasons why you stay on the Apple ecosystem. I want to hear from you down below in the comments and you're never going to hear from E3 again. It's canceled. It's not happening this year. It's likely never going to happen again because the, it, there's just no reason for it. Microsoft, Sony pulled out. They have their own shows. They also have the Game Awards in December. So that's where a lot of the big announcements for games are going on. You also have Gamescom, which takes place roughly around, the, in, you know, the August time frame. So there's a lot of different events. E3 kind of became unnecessary after a little bit. It is kind of sad for like indie developers who don't get the foot traffic for their games to get discovered. I don't necessarily like to see that happen, but E3 likely never coming back. And what's also being canceled are fake GPUs. NVIDIA is coming after the companies that are selling little fakies over on Chinese websites, trying to make sure that different companies that are passing themselves off as being NVIDIA GPUs are not actually that way. So this is going to happen in a few different ways. They're going to target ones of repacked GPUs. So this is official GPU companies making their own graphics cards, but then using product images from those official companies and then selling something entirely. This happened with video cards who posted an image in an article about a 51 risk GPU, which actually is a manly design and it has a spirit level. This was a legitimate partner card from NVIDIA for Manly, but then was used in publication for a different company. Additionally, there's things like mobile GPUs being rebranded into desktop cards that NVIDIA wants to stop, as well as crypto cards that have actually been repainted or redone in order to look like they're more legitimate or refurbished and making it seem like they're being sold by an official partner by NVIDIA. It's not quite clear how NVIDIA is going to go about stopping all of this, but they are saying that they are trying to make that happen. One of the things that NVIDIA has done in the past is just with their driver signings to make sure that the GPUs can't work unless they have an officially signed driver. There are a few generations as far as I was reading like Kepler and Maxwell. So going up to the 10 series where you can boot it without the driver signing. But now as we're getting into the RTX 20 and RTX 40 series, those GPUs can't be found out in the same way. So it creates a tricky situation where NVIDIA has already done something on the back end to make it work. I'm not sure what they're going to do when it comes to the retail sales side of things in order to make this work. But for, again, from also what I've read, AMD is not doing a whole lot to stop this. And there's a whole influx of Polaris, Vega, and sometimes even RDNA cards that are now hitting the market that are not officially partnered. And one of the big problems with all of this is that some of them are even preloaded with malware. So when you boot it into your system, you're not actually getting a good experience. Uh, additionally, you can potentially be buying a GPU that is stated as being one thing, but then actually isn't that because it's not too hard to just rename a GPU driver to make it seem like you got a GTX 1080 Ti, but in reality, you actually bought a GT 1030 and it was just put in a shroud to make it look like it was legitimate. So it is a problem overall in video working on it. But of course, one of the solutions NVIDIA is proposing besides them doing something about it is just purchase the RTX 40 series because that came out after crypto. So no crypto wear and tear on that. Of course, buy the brand new expensive thing. But AMD doesn't want you to do that anymore. The brand new thing from AMD is cheap, cheap. OK, they officially on Friday under the darkness of night after everybody went to bed, launched the A620 motherboards instead of having a big announcement or even telling us that these 
these were coming. They just slipped these right on in on March 31st for you to find out. It's not an April Fool's joke. There are affordable motherboards for the latest Ryzen 7000 series CPUs. And in fact, they're available over on Newegg right now. You can find the A620M from ASRock going for only 86 bucks. There's a few others that are around $100. Most companies haven't actually released theirs yet, but it's officially announced. A620 is here and it has a few caveats. While it is very affordable at 86 bucks, you pair this with the Ryzen 5 7600, you're looking at $300 for the CPU plus motherboard. You get a cheap set of DDR5, you're looking at $350 to $380 to get onto the new platform. Still expensive, a little bit more affordable than it was previously, but the A620 is cut down in a few different ways. Number one, no support for CPUs over 65 watts. And in fact, it can only go up to 88 watts of power delivery at its base spec. Now it could potentially be increased by motherboard manufacturers who would want their A620 motherboards to support higher end CPUs, but that 88 watts of power means that it doesn't actually support anything besides the non X CPU. So AMD's created a really weird situation with these motherboards. The vast majority of consumers don't need anything that B650 has to offer in terms of PCI Express 5.0. Nope, hardly the regular consumer actually needs that. Hardly the regular consumer also needs Ryzen overclocking. It's not something that they need on the lower end side of things. The vast majority of customers just want to buy a cheap motherboard that they can plop the CPU in and have it run full speed. And AMD has created the situation where that cannot happen on the cheapest of motherboards, which again does make some semblance of sense. But as Tom's hardware points out, it says this approach falls outside AMD's standard AIM5 policy thus far. It doesn't create a robust setup where every CPU can be slotted into every motherboard. I'm not looking for overclocking or for all of the feature sets. I am looking for the base level support for all of the CPUs that have released, especially when there are only friggin' three CPUs that'll work on this motherboard at the current moment the 7600, 7700, and 7900 with no lower end CPUs being released. It's a very disjointed strategy that I'm seeing from AMD here. I'd prefer something like B650 in terms of its power delivery support, but with all of the other features stripped away. No overclocking, no, no need for that. Just run the CPU at stock speeds. I'm not really trying to push this thing. No PCI Express 5.0, one PCI Express 4.0 GPU slot, one SSD slot, that's good to go or even pull it back to PCI Express 3.0 for the SSD. I think a vast majority of consumers would be totally okay with that. It's just a strange lineup. AMD's really gone for for 7,000. This transition to new DDR5, new support on PCI Express 5 does feel like it wasn't fully fleshed out. I think Intel had the better launch strategy when it came to the new CPUs, but at least the more affordable motherboards are here. A620, AMD finally confirmed it without telling us that they were coming, but there you go. Not April Fools with that, and I'm not fooling around with hot news anymore. I'll be back for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.